Am I the butthole for not joining in on my town search party for a missing 18-year-old girl even though it got me a school suspension? I used to be very close friends with this girl, we're more of acquaintances now but we still stay in touch sometimes. Her mom reported her as a missing person all over town and on the town's community pages of Facebook, the police post included that she's not been seen since she left voluntarily from her mother's residence. I texted her asking if she's seen the news, and apparently she hasn't. I told her about how she's been reported as a missing person and that everyone is looking for you. She said that she cut contact with her mom and has her own apartment now, and that she made it clear to her mom that she was leaving. I told her that we should let the police know that you're safe so they can call off the search. The next day or so after getting that information from my friend, we went to the police station to call off the search party since it was a mistake that she was missing. She explained to them about how she moved away from her mom so she was never actually missing. Later that day I saw some update posts from the police on Facebook and some other posts that she was discovered to be safe and that there was some confusion about whether she was actually missing or not. Well, people in the comments got upset that she wasn't brought back home to her mom, so now they're all doing their own individual search party to look for this 18-year-old girl. I told everyone in the comments that I know her and that she made it clear to her mom that she was moving out, and that I saw her at her apartment the other day perfectly fine. Then I got a bunch of comments coming back at me saying I should be ashamed of myself and that a child her age is not capable of being out on their own and that I should give them her apartment address. What are they going to do, break down her door? Even at school staff have been saying things to me here and there about how I should knock some sense into my friend, my friend and I are still in high school, I think it's weird they're all talking to me behind her back as if she doesn't know what she's doing. And then another thing is that her mom posted a comment under the police report saying just to give some advice to parents out there please, please, please keep some sort of tracking device on your kids' phones that will track them even if the phone is turned off. I wish to god I would have done one on underscore, even though her daughter left willingly. I told everyone that but I got more replies if you don't know if she really did, someone could have influenced her to leave her mom. It gets worse, I got an in-school suspension, a suspension that lasts two to three days but I stay in a reflection room all day long, because I was helping slash encouraging a runaway. How does that even relate to what I do in school? Her being away from home doesn't have anything to do with me other than I'm friends with her and know about her situation and respect her decisions. I'm still not going to give anything up because I believe I'm not in the wrong here but now everyone is against me. They're not being helpful either because the school principals keep pulling her out of class to talk to her. Because a lot of people asked, I live in the US. Not the butthole. You should challenge the suspension with your school and the school board. You can call lawyers to ask for advice. You may find one willing to give a free consultation. Your friend is an adult and unless there are laws where you live that give guardianship of 18 year olds who are still in high school to their parents, no one has any business telling your friend where to live. I'm wondering where the op's parents are in this because the school is overstepping its bounds. The op's friend is an adult. Her friend's mom sounds controlling. Original post and the friend went to the police and the police stepped back. Op's parents need to fight the school on this because original post did nothing wrong. Honestly this sounds like JW or Mormons. Of course the school would be involved. That is massive overstep. My mother is as mainstream as the come and she pulled a similar stunt when I left home at 18 because she was an abusive hag. My assumption is based on how the community and the school are acting in conjunction with this. Exactly what I thought, sells like it's either it's a super small town or religion is involved. If it's small enough to coordinate this kind of movement, wouldn't it be small enough to figure out where her apartment is? Something just seems off about this post. I've lived in a small town before and the public school and police weren't that coordinated, they shared resources with other nearby small towns. You'd have to move hours away to not be found. Depends on where you live. My hometown in Butef, USA with a population of 3,000 would have been easy as hell to get an apartment and just disappear, while still living in the same town. Not everybody knows each other. In fact, most people don't know each other. Very religious. I could see my school doing something like this, but still nobody would be able to find me or my apartment without help from somebody who knew where I was. This is fascinating to me, I've lived almost all my life in a huge city and always thought something like what you are describing would be impossible. That's the myth of small town life, 
anything above a couple of hundred people and it's no different from living in any city. Different neighborhoods and all. I grew up in a town of about 3,000 people and it would have been impossible to disappear there. It might take a week or two for someone to figure out where you were but there were only so many apartments and very few degrees of separation from anybody in town. In a town that size it is inevitable to run into someone you know at some point, getting gas, grocery store, etc. Granted it might feel like you've disappeared to everyone, but you can't disappear like you can in NYC. Doesn't it also seem bizarre that original post was able to simply text the girl and knew what was going on, but nobody else seems to be able to do that? Edited for grammar. It's called blocking people who harass you and talking to people who support you. Also, there's the old get a new number and only give it to trusted people but most likely original post wasn't blowing up her phone so she wasn't blocked. If you don't know a giant fuss has been raised, why would you avoid a message from a friend? This crap is more common than you would think. Were all of her friends harassing her? It seems like everyone apart from original post genuinely though she was missing and she only communicated with op. If someone suddenly vanishes and their mom worries and only one person seems to have talked to her people don't stop worrying right away just because the person has turned 18. Op didn't do anything wrong however. The real bizarre part is that she's missing but they keep pulling her out of class to talk to her. I think they're, out of control, concern is that she moved out of her mom's house, and presumably cut communication with her. My guess is that she probably had very good reason to do so, as backed by the mom saying she wished she had put a spy device on her adult daughter's phone. NTA, the mom, school, and various people scolding the original post are nuts. This young woman is 18, that's the age of majority. She can live where she wants. She may have missed a few days of school when she first moved out, some apartment offices aren't open on weekends, for example, or school might have just gone back after the holidays. It's also possible that they are on a hybrid schedule due to COVID so she is only supposed to attend some days and not others and therefore timed her move so she wouldn't miss in-person classes. The police called off the search quickly, and she was found, but then the mother incited people to continue searching. The only thing that doesn't make sense is why the mother hasn't just shown up at the school, if they are supporting the mom and not the daughter, they'd let her in. Don't forget that there were a lot of holidays in the last two weeks. I don't know where original post lives, but many countries give you like three weeks off over Christmas and New Year's Eve slash day. It's very possible that they were out of school for a week or a long weekend and that the friend left at the beginning of that. Then mom immediately calls for a search party. Friend still hasn't been back to school because school's not in session. Original post texts her friend when the search party starts and bring her friend to the police. Police call off search, holiday weekend ends, they're back in school. She's 18, so they can't do anything except lecture her at school. Yeah I didn't understand this bit. It's called no contact for a reason. Grown adult woman told her mother she was moving out and wanted no further contact. If the mother, or others, on behalf of the mother, continue to call, text, and generally harass this grown adult woman who is old enough to sign a legally binding contract, such as a lease which she cannot live in an apartment without signing, the grown adult woman can choose to contact the state bar to be referred to an attorney who can draft a cease and desist on her behalf. If any of those people show up on her doorstep uninvited and unwelcome, she can call the police and have them removed. She can also apply for TROs and such with the police because and I cannot stress this enough she is a grown adult woman whom the law says can make her own decisions about where she lives and with whom she associates. TLDR, she's an adult. She's well within her rights as an adult to ignore or block whomever she wishes from contacting her in any way. Probably anyone else who knows is too afraid to defend original post or speak up. This situation is wild and not the butthole. Exactly what I was thinking. Also from the original post I'm still not going to give anything up because I believe I'm not in the wrong here but now everyone is against me. They're not being helpful either because the school principals keep pulling her out of class to talk to her. So, she is still going to school? How is that a missing person if they see her every day at school? This actually isn't all that unusual even with minors. Over the age of 16 where I live, the police will try to help locate, but won't force the child to go home. Basically like a more complex welfare check. No one can actually force this girl to go back home to mom, the school isn't going to announce to everybody that she's there, because it's not anyone's business. 
kids will mostly keep quiet when it comes to adults in these types of situations. So even though she's not actually missing and the school may be trying to convince her to go home, no adults outside of the school know any of this is going on and just take the word of the mother. Edit to add the school is way overreaching their authority with original post though. Then how can the school issue ISS for helping a runaway if said runaway is in school regularly and not truant? Maybe not. I live in a fairly large US city but there is a large church here that also runs a K-12 school and it is a whole lot like this. I work with a girl who grew up in that church but she got kicked out of the school because her parents got divorced, I know kids who have been excommunicated because they tried to report abuse, and they even have their own police force. It's like two steps away from a cult but there's hundreds of members and they would absolutely do something like this. That, isn't two steps away from a cult. Once a church has its own enforcement it's at least one step into a cult. Since this is the USA I assume that church pretends to be Christian, However every example of church behavior you've given is anti-Christian, so I'm confused how such a church exists. Conservative Southern Baptist megachurches acting extremely unchristian is not a new concept. I also didn't mention it in the previous comment but they do have their own security force. Brookwood Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, you can literally Google it. It could be that the friend moved out of town but still within driving distance to the school. I grew up in a tiny town of about 1,000 people where you'd never be able to disappear, but about 30 minutes away is a much larger city that would be impossible to find someone in. I work in a school. An 18-year-old is not a runaway. My district has procedures in place for true runaways that includes involvement from the police. This upsets me because at 18 the student can drop out or sign themselves out. This school is totally in the wrong. It's also worth noting that 18-year-olds are still legally children in three states. If original post lives in Alabama or Nebraska the friend will be an adult at 19. In Mississippi it's 21. I still think this is not the butthole regardless, but it may be more complicated legally. What? What? So? They let children vote in those states? Or do they steal their political voice until that age limit as well? This sounds insane. I think they can still vote at 18. I'm not sure, honestly. I've never lived in any of those states, but I think I've seen it come up in a thread or two about controlling parents from the wrong place. Not the butthole. Unless this girl has reduced mental capability, she's not a child anymore. She's an adult, and doesn't need protected or rescued. What the F is up with this stupid ass town? I really can't comprehend this crap. Is the whole community dumb? I don't know. The whole post may be trolling. It may be from some country with different views about children and families but I don't think so. Certain areas of the southern US are like this, big on the honor thy father and mother. They tend to throw the biggest fit if you don't stand for the pledge or national anthem. This is really just certain areas of the US. It might be more common among some of the south but people like that are all over. This screams small town or heavily religious just because of how much everyone is against original post even though they're in the right. That's more of a rural America thing. My guess is they're in an area with a controlling religion. Have you seen those documentaries about adults trying to escape the Mormons? As much as I hate hating on religion, and have known some very nice and normal people, the Amish can be like this too. You'd be surprised. There was a point where I didn't want any of my family and certain others to know where I was because of the pure toxicity. All I would disclose was I was in another state and safe. Well they found my address anyways, they had inside intel through and now ex-best friend who knew I wanted my privacy from pretty much everyone else, they called the police and nagged for a welfare check with a bunch of absurd claims. I was 22 when this happened, and I had people taking my mom and my ex-boyfriend's side. They claimed they had my best friend make the call but I know that's BS. I called her every two weeks to let her know I was fine. Agreed. Using FB, and other media, to search for missing individuals is quite a common tactic for abusers to locate their victims. I never ever share appeals for missing individuals unless they are from official sources, and even then I generally don't. The fact that they organized a search without law enforcement is massively concerning and we're so far down the rabbit hole that it's hardly surprising original posts got suspended. Obviously the suspension is outrageous and original post should try to appeal that nonsense. Not the butthole. 
Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. We welcome your comments below. Another of our videos will begin shortly.